guys, this being the first tour in 15 years, um, you know, why the decision to, to go out and do this? Yeah, we drifted into it. You know, I mean, it sounds a little aimless and sort of, I think sometimes people think that there should be a reason. And when you say that we're doing it for fun, it almost sort of over trivializes something that most people think there should be a reason and should be rebellious and there should be, a, we should be saying something. But really, you know, I mean, in real life, we just actually fancied doing it, you know? And we kind of talked to each other quite a few times over the years about doing it. Sometimes we got disinterested, you know, we talked ourselves out of it the same day we started talking about it. Sometimes it seemed more exciting than others. And probably the, the key moment was when we'd sat in a room with Peter and Steve, the five of us together, discussing the possibility of that happening. And it seemed to be even more of an uphill struggle, you know, to sort of get a yes out of everybody. So, you know, literally that, that same moment when, when everybody did kind of started dispersing from that room and we just said, well, how about doing this? And it suddenly kind of started to get a little bit of cement, you know. And then it was just a question of when do we do it? I mean, now we're gonna, we know we're going to do it, but now when do we do it? So, you know, but literally we just kind of drifted, you know, we'd been talking about it and we did it because we enjoyed doing it. Like we wanted to do it, I think we knew we could we could do it and it was just, you know, just, just to make 100% sure and a chance to do a bit of rehearsal really. From the musical point of view, it was surprisingly easy, really, you just got there and we sort of... Show the drum. <laughs> Fun the drum, the drums took a bit of time to catch up with everybody else, but to be honest, we were all kind of slightly, yeah, yeah. you know, feeling our way a little bit. I mean, but in terms of, we, we played a couple of the easier songs, you know, like No Son of Mine and Turn On Again, which sort of, you know, seemed to sound pretty good straight away. Um, and, and just the idea and being with everybody, with Chester and Daryl as well, you know, so we're all good friends and just it's suddenly back into a whole sort of the circus that we, that we used to be. And, and it's very appealing to do all that with all the music that we all love and want to play and, and, and felt it was time to sort of bring out, dust it, dust it off and present it to an audience again. For all of us, it's a matter of trying to get back into your old skin uh, one way or another. In my mm. case, it was finding sort of sounds and everything, which I had long since kind of lost, as it were. <laughs> Um, having been obviously recent, the last couple of years, few years, been working on classical things, so all my instruments are sort of playing oboes and clarinets and things. So I had to get back to having you know the old sounds and things, and and that that was fun for me to do and a challenge, and I think for all of us and for Phil to get back into playing that particular kind of style was a thing, and for Mike just to get back to playing the right notes again. You know. <laughs> why start? Why start now? <laughs> You're doing it because you want to do it. You're not. You're not doing it as, as it's not part of. It's almost unrelated to the past in some respects, because you're just doing it now for different reasons. There's no album to promote. So. Uh, one thing we did say, and we we're just talking about what you're going to do, you know, production-wise. We did say we wouldn't try and challenge like we used to do something that's so new and different and revolutionary that actually never works till the last day. You know, we, we in a sense, all the technology we've used. Um, existed. So we kind of knew, and it's, it's not a long run, so you don't want to spend the first half of it trying to get it working, you know, like we used to in the past. So we made sure that everything was tried and tested. Although we have, we have challenged it in terms of what we're doing with the screens and the look and the way we've uh, got the content and the whole thing together. But, uh, you know, just in terms of what was available technology-wise, everything was, was, we knew was roadworthy. And I must say, I think Mark did a great job. I mean, he, he designed an incredibly complicated set in a way that actually assembles up and down quite quickly. He designed it so it could work, you know. Sit in Brussels for two weeks and sort of eventually get everything working, you know, and then you take it out, and then it's like reassembling a toy or something. You know, it's it's got to be able to be reassembled and working every every day or every gig, and that that requires an awful lot of ingenuity. We like to we like to sort of check what all the sort of major looks are when it comes to the lights. You sort of see what the big big looks are that you can get out of it, and then try to sort of make certain they happen at the right time in the. In the set, in terms of the set, it's just quite impossible to please everybody. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a certainly a, a percentage of the audience, you know, quite a small percentage, but a certain percentage who would like to hear nothing beyond 
Lam Lasana Broadway, you know, we know that. Um, and others who probably only want to hear stuff really from sort of the, the hits onwards. I mean, originally it wasn't our, our idea to do stadiums. We thought, we were thinking, looking, I think, at, you know, the normal sort of, the more arena type places. We felt that we probably would be okay with them. But, uh, you know, as soon as once the people started talking about it, and John Giddings, our promoter, you know, he said, no, no, you, you can do stadiums, you should do stadiums. If you're only going to do 20 shows, then do stadiums, because it's the only way you're going to cover the ground. So we were a bit nervous about it, actually, uh, particularly in England, where we have a sort of, we couldn't quite tell really how we stand in England, because, you know, the, you get sort of slightly dodgy press there. And, uh, but then, we were, so it was very gratifying. And immediately when, when these things did sell as well as they did, I think we felt we should have done a couple more shows in the UK. So tell me about this View Cinema show. Well, yes, we're doing this the cinema, cinema, cinema broadcast in 5.1 sound. And if it's the first time, there's obviously a possibility of, of disaster there, but that's quite fun in itself, isn't it? So it's really being mixed by... Um, the live mix is being done by Nick Davis, who's the man who's done all our 5.1 mixes for the remixes of all, the, all our earlier albums, which are slowly becoming available, which in themselves are, are interesting things because you're sort of hearing all the... Um, old songs you know done in that sound and also the chance to remix and certainly the early albums do improve a great deal for, through that and I think really in this the same sort of way you can for a live uh, album and we've done live DVDs we've done in 5.1 it really does put you in the in the place you know as opposed to a stereo it, it just makes it feel like a live performance so hopefully if the sound is good and if the it looks good if everything's good it'll mm. be good if it's, it's not that, good, then it yeah, won't. It has that little bit of extra unseen pressure. Hopefully, in the, in the heat of the moment, you forget about it. You know? yeah. I, think, I think you do. Yeah, let's hope we do. Well, we're going out live on the radio to sort of, while we're doing it. We're doing these available CDs available from people yeah, away. And we're doing it at the cinemas in countries we're not there. It kind of, it's a lot of, there's a lot of sort of, um, but you know, in the heat of battle, you kind yeah, of Yeah, because in the old it. days, you know, if you had a night when a few things, you cocked up badly. It stayed thought, that was, it's, Yeah, it was just that one place that knew about it, you know. Now you do it and it's sort of there for posterity. People are going to have the CDs after the show and stuff. Anyhow, there you go. I suppose it's like, it's like car crashes, isn't it, in races. It's what people sort of want, really. <laughs> yes, so let's give it to them. <laughs>